Hi everybody, welcome back to To Be Like Christ. Today, 1 Chronicles chapter 21 is the topic of our study. We're going to talk about David taking a census. If you're with us for our second Samuel study, this is going to be another uh, very familiar chapter. Let's talk about our timeline. First of all, when did these events happen? And by the way, you can get this PDF on our website for free. There's a link down in the description. It's to be like Christ.com. And watch out for the books that contain all these outlines, book by book, that you'll be able to buy on Amazon. Some of them are available right now, and you can see the link down in, in the description as well for that. Anyway, timeline, back to that. We're talking about King David and his reign. It spanned from about 1055 to 1015 BC, 40 years. Now, the book of First Chronicles was written sometime after that, a couple, couple centuries after that, but it records the history of David. I will say that in 2 Chronicles, 1 Kings, 2 Kings, our dates are going to change quite a bit more than they have in these last couple of books. <laughs> so I know that definitely gets repetitive if you join us for our study every day. Let's talk now about our, our main characters. First, David, the king of Judah and Israel. Joab, the commander of David's army. Gad, Gad was a prophet of God and David's seer. He had a couple different interactions with David during uh, in the books of of 1 Samuel, 2 Samuel, and 1 Chronicles. And then Ornan, or Arana, as he's called in 2 Samuel, a Jebusite who owned a threshing floor near Jerusalem. As we go over to our map and our, look at our locations for chapter 21, we have an interesting phrase that appears here that we see several times in the Bible. It's the phrase from Beersheba to Dan. It's used in verse 2. These two cities were commonly cited when someone was trying to refer to the entire nation of Israel because Dan sat at the northern border of Israel and then Beersheba sat at the southern border of uh, Judah, um, or the Promised Land. We're also going to talk about Ornan's threshing floor. This was located at a really interesting spot. It was located where the Jerusalem temple would eventually be built by David's son Solomon. So we're talking basically in the city of Jerusalem. You'll see that the first bullet point on our outline tells us which chapter in 2 Samuel this one parallels. It's 2 Samuel chapter 24, the very last chapter of that book. So with that, know that, that if you want more details or you want kind of the alternative record of this history, it's there. Our first section, verses 1 through 6, David's sinful census. Satan enticed David to take a census of the Israelites, of the fighting men within Israel. David told Joab, his commander, to go through the nation and to number all the people. But Joab knew that David's request was not something that was pleasing to the Lord. And he encouraged David just to abandon this idea and to trust that God was going to increase his kingdom, that God would give him the fighting men that he needed. But David didn't listen to him, and he sent him all throughout Israel for nine months and 20 days, counting all of the people. That's according to 2 Samuel 24, verse 8. Joab returned with kind of a partial census completed. He reported that there were 1,100,000 fighting men and 470,000 from Judah. But he didn't include the Levites or the people of Benjamin because, quote, the king's command was abhorrent to him. So he didn't agree with it, so he didn't really <laughs> complete the job as thoroughly maybe as David would have wanted. I'm not sure. That's what the text says, though. Lo and behold, we find out Joab was right in verses 7 through 17. David chooses between three forms of punishment. David's conscience actually guilted him after the census was completed. 2 Samuel tells us that his heart struck him, and he prayed that the Lord would forgive him. The call to prayer just uh, started, so <laughs> we've, got, we've got the Bible to study, though. We're going mean, to keep going. God was, in fact, angry with David, and he sent the prophet Gad to tell David that there was going to be a punishment forthcoming. David was allowed to choose between three forms of punishment. This is kind of a unique situation. The first option was three years of famine. The second option was three months of devastation from David's enemies, having to be on the run from his enemies. And then the third one was three days of disease. So which did David choose? He chose the three days of disease. So God sent an angel that spread this disease, and in you know just a couple days, 70,000 people were dead. When the angel was about to strike Jerusalem with this plague, God relented and he spared the city. The angel withdrew and went to the threshing floor of Ar uh, 
Arana in 2 Samuel or Ornan in 1 Chronicles. Section number 3, verses 18 through 25, David builds an altar at the threshing floor. So Gad went to David, and he told him that he should build an altar where the angel was at the threshing floor. David went to meet this guy named Ornan, and he offered, Ornan actually offered to give David the threshing floor for free. But David insisted that he was going to pay. David paid Ornan 600 shekels of gold for the threshing floor. He built an altar. He offered burnt offerings and peace offerings to the Lord. And the Lord responded to his sacrifices by sending fire from heaven. And when that was done, the desolation of the plague was stopped. And so there you have it. First Chronicles chapter 21, very similar to 2 Samuel chapter 24. Now for our application section. And I think this is a question that a lot of people have, and including myself. So it's worth going over for a second time. Why was God so upset with David? I mean, what's wrong with a census? We have censuses often in, in the countries that we live in, right? And there's nothing necessarily sinful about those. What was wrong with David's census? I think David's move to take the census suggests that his heart trusted more in the number of his fighting men than it did on the power of God. And Joab even seemed to recognize this. One lesson that we'll see repeated again and again and again as we go through the text of the Bible is that numbers don't mean anything when God's power is a factor in a situation. Numbers do not ensure success. We've already learned this from stories like Gideon, David's mighty men, and Samson at the end of his life. When we put our trust in numbers, we've lost sight of the power of the kingdom of God. God wants our faithfulness, and he wants us to trust in him. Ultimately, the numbers are irrelevant when God is on our side.